As always, I don't speak for all blind people. I speak for me, Molly, who is one blind person. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. You can use code Molly Burke to get 10% off your purchase of a website or domain name. I genuinely can't believe that it has taken me until season six of Love is Blind to sit down and make a video talking about how I as a blind woman feel about the show Love is Blind. Now, I, like pretty much everybody else, watched season one in 2020 because what else was there to do? I wanna say, I am genuinely not typically a reality TV show girly. I have never watched Love Island. I've never watched a single episode of Bachelor or Bachelorette. Never watched the Kardashians, Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Like I don't, I don't typically watch reality TV shows. None of the housewives of whatever XYZ city. Not a reality show girly. Never grew up really watching reality TV shows, except like competition shows like American Idol. I watched the odd bit of Survivor when I was like eight. But beyond that, reality TV was never really my thing. It was never really my family's thing. And I pretty much watched it because it was 2020. What else were we to do? All of us were just sitting home watching content, content, content. And we were running low. We needed all the new content we could get. So I was just like, why not give it a go? And I'm not gonna lie to you. When I saw the title, I thought it was a dating show about blind people. What the hell? What are you on about? Sorry, excuse my Alexa. So I genuinely thought it was a show about blind people dating. Kind of like Love on the Spectrum is for people with autism. I thought Love is Blind was that for blind people. And I was really excited because representation, hello. I was very excited. And then I clicked on it and very quickly realized I was wrong. But by the time I had figured that out, I was like, oh, I'm intrigued. And ever since I have in fact been hooked, I would consider it my gateway drug to reality TV. I would consider it my absolute favorite all time ever reality TV show. Now that said, I still don't watch a lot of reality TV, especially the ones where people just like scream at each other a lot. That holds no appeal to me. It's just because I don't know, I cannot figure out what's going on when a million people are screaming at each other on the TV. Or maybe it's just because like that environment would make me so anxious. Like yelling, raising your voice, Mm -mm, get it away from me, I do not like that energy. So yeah, I'm not about that. But the only other reality TV show that I've watched and loved was Married at First Sight. And immediately when I started watching Love is Blind, I was like, oh, this is like Married at First Sight, but reversed. And I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this, but I remember looking it up at the time and I'm pretty sure it was the same creators. Like the people who created that show also created Love is Blind. I'm pretty positive, but I have not looked it up since. So maybe I'm misremembering. But if not, they were definitely heavily inspired because it's so similar. And another like very OG dating show, like I think it's called Dating in the Dark. It reminded me of a combination of Dating in the Dark and Married at First Sight, which like I said, are the only like two reality shows that ever really spoke to me. And I think it's because it's less about drama and more about the romance. And I'm a sucker for love. I love love. Even if it is delusional love, I love it. I love watching delusional love. And I just love watching humans be humans and navigate human experiences and human feelings. And I think that's why I really enjoy them. And I'm so far six episodes in to season six. By the time this is being posted, I'm pretty sure more episodes have dropped and I assure you, I have binged them. But at the time that I'm filming this, only the first six episodes have dropped and I did in fact binge those. Um, so I'm fully up to date and I can thankfully say that this season is so much better than the absolute dumpster fire that was season five. I only forced my way through season five because I have like friends who watch it too and we like to talk about it together and it's a way to stay connected with my friends. But if not for that, I would have tapped out of season five because season five for me was more drama, less love. And that's, I'm not about that. I want like 99% delusional cute love and 1% drama to keep it interesting. And that was like 99% drama and 1% cute delusional love. So it was just not for me, but I, I pushed through, but I'm happy to see that they've like, so far it seems righted some of the wrongs, 
Don't get me wrong, it's reality TV. There's still drama, but I feel like it's like mostly just interesting watching the dynamics of human beings navigate overwhelming feelings. And I also wanna say that I watch this with probably a deeper understanding as somebody who works in the entertainment industry, who I myself has wor have worked in television, I have done documentaries, I have been approached for a gazillion reality TV shows at this point myself. I have read the contracts many times over. My team has read the contracts. I've gone through auditions for these kinds of things. I've pitched reality shows. Like I very much understand this world. And I also watch it with a lot of friends who work in the back end of TV, because I live in LA. So I have many friends that have either been on reality TV shows, edit them, film them, produce them, uh, cast for them. So I have like probably a better understanding of reality TV show di show dynamics than the average viewer does, which I have so much fun. Like whenever I watch them, I love being like, oop, oop, they spliced that edit. That was a, that was a dirty edit. So I watch these with an understanding that I am not watching people at their truest form. We are watching them be a character that networks have created for them to be to slot into a narrative that the show wants based on how they choose to edit the people and also based on arguably pretty shady practices oftentimes. I'm not here to debate whether reality TV show is like immoral or not, because I think definitely parts of it are immoral, like the things that they do, providing copious amounts of alcohol and not providing enough food, taking away phones, X, Y, Z. And as somebody who has read many of these contracts myself, I can tell you, I would never sign one. And that is why I have never signed one because there are some of the dirtiest contracts you'll see. I don't think unless I was also an executive producer on a reality TV show, I would choose to sign one of those contracts. Anyways, I know that none of you are here for my talk about that. You wanna know what I think of the concept is love blind as somebody who has only fallen in love as a blind person. And that is what I'm gonna get into now, but before I do so, I do wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace has been a longtime partner of this channel, and it is your one-stop shop to build a beautiful platform and build your brand. That is where I host my website, mollyburkofficial.com, and I utilized their flexible templates to create my website, which I think looks very custom and very unique and tailored to my brand. It's all plug and play, and they even have accessibility options like adding alt text to your images, which add alt text to your images, it's very important be inclusive. They also have tons of tools that you can use to build your brand. They have marketing tools to help you as well as great an analytics and insights. But you can also do things like create and sell online courses, have an integrated blog, share video content. You can connect it to your social media platforms, sell products, both physical products and digital products. You can book and schedule appointments with push outs for reminders, take payment, and so much more. So you can use code Molly Burke to get 10% off your purchase of a website or domain name on Squarespace. All right. Now the juicy stuff. As always, I don't speak for all blind people. I speak for me, Molly, who is one blind person. I think love is blind for very few people. And I think it's super nuanced. It's very personal, but there's like a lot that goes into it. I had my first boyfriend, like my first proper boyfriend, when I was 14, 15. I was like just about to turn 15 when we met. I lost the majority of my vision at 14, as you know. So for me, I've only ever fallen in love truly and been in serious committed relationships and done the majority of my dating or basically all of my dating as somebody who cannot physically see their partners. I also would consider myself to be demisexual, falling somewhere on the asexual spectrum. And I cannot speak to whether that is because I'm blind or that is who I would always be because there are sighted people who are demisexual. This video is not about my demisexuality, so I'm not gonna get into it too much here. What I'll say is being demisexual looks different for everybody. 
it is a spectrum and I fall somewhere on that spectrum or I consider myself to fall somewhere on that spectrum. For me, that means that I have no sexual desire or sexual interest to physically connect with a partner unless I have a really strong emotional connection. Unless I have already started to fall for them emotionally, mentally, spiritually. That said, I still have physical preferences. You know, sometimes to make my point, I go for shock value, not gonna lie. We love a good shock value moment. So in my past, I have often talked about, like I've often been like, I'm shallow. And it's not because I actually consider myself to be super shallow, it's because I like to shock people. Because so many people for so long have considered blind people to be like non-judgmental about images or to have no preference for anything aesthetic, anything visual um, for us, you know, you'll often hear blind people talk about how people will like think they have a chance with us just cause we're blind. It, it's like really annoying. And so for shock value, I've often been like, I'm shallow, I'm allowed physical preferences. I'm actually not shallow to be honest. I'm not, I don't consider myself shallow, but like I said, I do it to like really shock people and get them out of this really annoying mindset that blind people are not allowed to have physical preferences. You guys know, I have a very big love of all things aesthetic. I love to have a beautiful aesthetic home around me. I love fashion. Not that this outfit is giving fashion today. It's giving winter cozy comfort. I love makeup. I love hair. I love jewelry. I love tattoos. And so I do like aesthetics. I like visual things and I find ways to enjoy them without seeing them. And that does include my partner. So while yes, I have to have a deep emotional bond with somebody before I can progress physically, I still have physical preferences. And I still have things that like for me would be like, mm, I don't know if I can like get past that one. Like even if I have a deep emotional connection, I'd still have things where I'm like, that's just not for me. And I've always said that I have a type in my mind. Like I have a guy that is like, that's my ideal. But if I like really fell for somebody and they didn't align with that at all, I would still date them. I have dated such a wide spectrum of men. I have dated somebody who was half black, half white, half Japanese, half white, Chinese, Korean, Indian, um, Latino, and Caucasian. So I have dated a very wide spectrum of looks. I have dated men who are like complete baby faced, no body hair, cannot grow facial hair to speak of. And I have dated men with big beards, lots of arm hair, lots of body hair. I've dated men with man buns and I've dated men with buzz cuts. Like I have dated men who were six foot three, I think is the tallest I've dated. And I've dated men who were like five foot four. I've dated men who were 13 years older than me. And I've dated men who were two years younger than me. I have dated a wide spectrum of men. While I have my physical preferences and my ideals, if I connect with somebody most of those go down the drain because emotional connection, mental, spiritual connection is so much harder to find than a physical connection. And I think many people have had a, an experience where somebody becomes significantly more attractive when you get to know their personality. Like maybe at first you're like, eh, okay, like they're fine, they're average, but then you get to know them and they're like, oh my God, they're so funny, they're so kind, they're so charismatic. And you're like, okay, okay, eight. Okay, somebody went from a six to a hard eight. Like when you get to know people, it just changes things. And equally, there can be eights that go to fours when you get to know them. Cause you're like, okay, <laughs> looks like all the beauty's on the outside and inside is empty. And so while I do firmly believe that you can fall for somebody based on everything outside of their appearance, I think not only will appearance ultimately at a certain point start to play a role for better or for worse, right? It can make you fall for somebody even more or it can make you be like, mm, this is gonna be a bit more difficult to progress physically than I was expecting because some people have very specific types, some people are more open, but I think everybody has like, or most people, I won't say everybody, I think most people have certain things 
that they just tend to not be attracted to. And that's okay. There's people I've had to accept who are not gonna date me specifically and only because I'm blind. There are people who have told me I'm too short. I have had men tell me like they just don't find how petite I am to be attractive. You guys know me, like I'm four foot 11. I'm not like, oh, I'm petite at 5'3". No, I'm four foot 11, all right? I'm child-sized and I've had guys who just don't find that attractive. And I, you know, that's, that guy's not for me. He's not my man. If because I'm blind or because I'm short, he's not into me, he's not into me. And there's gonna be other men who are. And so I don't think we need to appeal to everybody because nobody ever is going to. Like you, it's that saying, you might be the sw ripest, sweetest peach, but some people don't like peaches or hell, some people are allergic to them. And so it's okay that not everybody is going to be physically attracted to you. And I think it's sometimes why we have friends who we just like absolutely adore, but it never progresses into something romantic because for one reason or another, they're just not our type. And I also think that there are only so many things that you can learn about a person from behind a wall. And I think this is even more important than discussing the physical component of finally seeing each other. And I'd, I'd like to say that eventually, as a blind person, I will see you. Will I physically see you with my eyes? No, but I will see you with my hands, which is how I experience and see the world. And so eventually, as a relationship for me progresses, typically by then, sighted people in my life has, have described the person, the, the guy himself might have described himself to me, but eventually, like, I will feel you, I will touch you you know, for myself. In the show, eventually they will come out from behind a wall and they will see each other with their eyes, which is how these people see the world. I think that beyond just the seeing each other aspect of this show, there is only so much you can learn from conversation. Relationships are so much more than talking. There's plenty of people that I could fall for by talking to them, but words and actions are so different. A man can sell you the world and so could a woman, but do they have the actions that back that up? And I don't think necessarily people are misleading or lying. I think sometimes they're saying things that they believe or they're saying things that they really want to be true, but it's just not actually who they are or in their nature. And I think equally, sometimes those things might be true when they have a partner who aligns with them on it, but if your, for example, your communication style, when you're, in an when you're in an argument, does not mesh well, yes, those things can be overcome, but in, in two months or in a month or whatever the heck it is till you get to the altar, like probably not. Those things are things that take time and kinks that take time to work out in a relationship. There is, this is gonna sound harsh, but keep in mind, I would absolutely in no world ever consider myself to be a hopeless romantic. I believe I'm a realist about love. And sometimes that means my opinions on love aren't like what people wanna hear. They're not mushy gushy. I don't think love's enough ever. I will never believe that love is enough. I don't believe love conquers all. I believe love is the baseline. Like love is what needs to be there above and beyond everything. If you don't have love, none of the other stuff really matters. However, so much more than love needs to be there for a relationship to work long-term. So while love might be blind, I don't think marriage can be. I don't think relationships can be. The dynamics of how you communicate when you're in real life, of how do you function living together, your cleaning styles, your eating habits, your social habits, how is your dynamics with friends and family, with each other's friends and family and your own. Uh, there's just, God, there's so, so, so much. And I say this as somebody, who has been in multiple long-term relationships, obviously none of which have worked out thus far. I mean, I'm currently in a relationship for just over a year. We literally had our one year anniversary yesterday. If the camera angle has changed slightly, it's because Elton John decided that he needed to get past the tripod. And so we had to move it. And just to move over here a little. Just to slightly move, just to move from one side of the tripod to the other. Um, also, I don't know if you guys can hear it. I'm hoping not because I'm using the mic, but some truck just keeps on insisting on be beeping throughout this video. So I apologize if you can hear that. My one year anniversary was yesterday. So I would consider one year like long term-ish. You're like entering long term. 
um, and you're definitely hopeful that it can become long-term at this point, um, or I feel like you, you wouldn't, or at least you shouldn't still be there. But that said, you know, it, it is working out, so I can't say it hasn't worked out. It is currently actively working out, but it's not like I'm married, you know? I'm not speaking as somebody who's like an expert in marriage. And we all, you know, I don't, I feel like I shouldn't have to give this disclaimer. I'm not a love and marriage coach, relationship expert, matchmaker. Like I said, I'm just speaking from somebody who has lived with a partner who I was with for a year and a half. Um, I was previously in a two and a half year relationship. I've been in a nine month relationship at just 15. So I feel like I have a decent amount of relationship experience over a quite a long period of my life and in different scenarios. And I will say as somebody who fell in love with somebody during the pandemic, where we basically could only talk, we couldn't go out with friends, we couldn't go to restaurants, we couldn't have a normal dating dynamic, I can say that once we could, it changes things. You see things about that person that you could not see before that. So I've experienced something similar enough in that I fell in love with somebody just by talking to them and then I lived with them and I experienced how that brought new dynamics and things that I couldn't have known just from talking. For example, there's things that that person told me they could do that once I lived with them, I found out they could not. And so that's an example of how people can say something but their actions might not align with that. And equally, once we were able to actually start living what is more true to a normal life experience where we are interacting with the world around us. I saw things about that person that I also couldn't have known or expected until we were able to do that. And ultimately, like obviously that relationship did not work out for those reasons and many others. And so I think I've had experiences, I, I can wholeheartedly say like love is not blind and it, it never will be, at least not for most people. And we've seen some success stories come out of the show, but overwhelmingly most have not worked out. And I think that's understandable. And I don't think it says anything bad about these people. Like I don't think it means that they're, that they're shallow or bad people or judgmental. Relationships are complicated. Relationships are hard. Why do you think the divorce rate is so high with people who saw each other when they fell in love and dated for two or five years before they married? Like, and d divorce is still so high. It's personally why I would never get married. I would never even consider getting married before living with a partner. And equally, as somebody who moved in with a partner after only two months, I would never move in with a partner again until I was with them for at least a year. And those are choices that I'm making for me personally because of negative experiences in the past. I'm not telling you what to do and I'm not telling you if you've moved fast, it's wrong. It worked for my parents, they moved very fast. My ex, his parents also moved very fast and it worked for them. Um, but just because it worked for our parents didn't mean it worked for us. And so I'm not telling you not to do that. I'm not telling you you need to wait. I'm not telling you you need to live with your partner before getting married. Those are just boundaries and standards that I now have for myself as a 30 year old woman with enough relationship experience and enough understanding of my own self and, and what I need um, from myself, from my relationship, from my partner. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's my personal synopsis, my opinion on what I think as a real blind person with love is blind. And I've also seen a lot of disabled people say like they'd love to see the dynamic of like a disabled person being in the pods. It's so com it's so complex. I think I think we've all had to realize as disabled people dating is just always going to be harder for us. And I think I understand that it takes a special kind of partner to be open to that. And I think that it would definitely add a really unique dynamic, but I don't know that I would like to see a disabled person be put in that position. And I think there's a reason they've never done it before. That said, I'd love increased representation of disabled people in dating shows and not just disabled people dating disabled people because, well, that is something that happens. Equally, interable dating is something that happens. I would say I know just as many people who are in interabled relationships, if not more, than people who are in relationships where both parties are disabled. So I do think it's an interesting dynamic to explore, but it's, it's risky. It can be even potentially dangerous given the statistics we know around particularly disabled women um, facing abuse and violence in dating and romance. Um, so I, I, 
I too, you guys know, like one of my biggest passions that exists is increased representation and authentic representation in media of disabled people. But I'm not sure myself that I know how to like safely and correctly navigate that in a romance space. So I'd be very curious to hear your opinions on that, particularly if you are disabled or if you're somebody who's in an interabled or has been in one uh, relationship. So that's that, that's all. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop rambling. Thank you for listening to my TED talk. Appreciate you for coming and uh, Love is Blind next steps should be out. So I'm gonna go binge watch those with some chocolate. Sounds like a good Friday to me. Sending you all love and good vibes, bye. Oh, and until next time, you can click over here to hear about my relationship and how it's going, or you can click over here to watch this other video I recently posted. Bye.